Good morning and welcome. Welcome to your Yoga Sessions live podcast with me, Mark J. Aquaviva, on this uh, chilly summer morning, 20, 28th of June, 2022. Hope you're uh, doing wonderfully wherever you are. Um, yes, let's get into the content. Um, so I've got a question from last week. I wasn't able to do it last week. So I had a bit of a plumbing emergency to deal with. Um, so here we go, uh, let's see, from uh, Manoj Chuan, uh, sorry, sorry my friend, I don't know how to pronounce your name, and I know you're very active in the yoga community. Uh, thank you for your information, Mark, uh, keep, keep up the great work. Um, just ask about, just ask what about Ashtanga Yoga? Okay, um, a bit of a, a little bit of a vague question, but um, and I have another one which um, I can work with. I'll go back to that in a minute. But uh, Ashtanga Yoga, um, uh, it depends what you mean. Uh, I, mean I, I'm, I, th I believe that you mean the the actual eight limbs. Eight, Ashtanga means eight limbs. Um, and the eight limbs of the yo of yoga practice, um, as described by um, um, Patanjali, involves all levels of practice, uh, and it, it involves the um, adherence to uh, principles in your in your. Um, activity in life, you know, the, the yamas and the niyamas. Uh, so sort of setting up appropriate practice and state of mind and doing appropriate study, self-inquiry. Uh, uh, it's usually described as moral, um, morals, no, ethics and ethics and observances. Uh, you know, uh, an approach to life um, that is principle based is an important part of Ashtanga practice. Uh, people, when, you, when you say Ashtanga Yoga, most people uh, are talking about the, the, the sequences. The sun salutes followed by various uh, intense physical practices. And the, the physical practice itself um, is not Ashtanga Yoga. It's a one limb of a whole system. And the whole system includes the meditation, includes the contemplation, it includes um, attempting to uh, attain a state of samadhi. But the physical practice, which is what most people are talking about when they talk about Ashtanga Yoga, is not Ashtanga Yoga. <laughs> it's just a single limb of it. And in fact, uh, the actual physical practice, as the, you know, the way Ashtanga Yoga is defined, that particular physical practice was kind of put together as a way of getting 14 year old boys to be strong enough to go to war. Okay, so, so um, the physical practice of Ashtanga Yoga, I don't consider to be the actual meaning of Ashtanga. Um, that, that being said, you know, some of the most um, dedicated uh, yogis I've ever met have been Ashtangis. And, um, but they, they are usually involved in all of the eight limbs. So uh, that, that's the only thing I have to say about um, Ashtanga Yoga. Uh, the, the physical practice itself, I personally think is a little bit inappropriate for um, your average middle-aged Western, <laughs> Western man. Um, simply because it's designed to make you fit for war and um, yes, it makes you fit for uh, meditation too, but not if you start with all sorts of um, complications born of your style of life. Um, it can and does regularly um, lead to um, quite debilitating injury, um, simply because of the culture of pushing harder and and trying to get further into the posture, and uh, and um, you know, I, I don't, I have nothing against Ashtanga Yoga at all. For those that enjoy it and have been doing it from an early age, uh, they are some of the nicest people I've ever met. <laughs> you know, 
Um, but in terms of um, it being a framework that you use as a kind of ambitious attempt to sort your body out, it's not the best way to go. Uh, not, not for your average Westerner, I don't think. That, that, that's my honest opinion. Um, but Ashtanga itself, the entirety of its practice is fantastic. So that, that, that's my words on it. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I'll probably get some hate for that, but um, um, it's, it's my opinion, you know, and uh, it's based on what I understand. So, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, Manad, Manoj, uh, you seem to be a very nice man. You're very supportive, so thank you for all your support, and I'm, I have no doubt that you are on the path true path so um ah oh, from shelley michelle vusden how are you doing my dear um lately when i come into downward dog and settle i don't feel comfortable in the left shoulder okay so let's have a go at dog pose something a bit simpler that i can deal with um so yeah she has a go at do downward dog and when she settles she doesn't feel good in her shoulder so that would mean shelley that when you settle, um, you are relying on the shoulder carrying your weight, probably, or you are settling into something that is kind of distortive for the spine in that area. So, how to set that up? Let, well, let's see. Um, <clears throat> so, if you're interested in, I can't remember which one you said, but. Um, if you're interested in your shoulders and uh, in that you, you know that when you do dog and you settle, you end up with a problem with one of your shoulders. The job is to work out what happens. You know, wh what is it that is causing the problem? And it's not your shoulder. It's not your shoulder that's causing the problem. It's the, the way you are supporting yourself. So the uh, attention is how... Do I support myself with my own touch, my relationship to the ground? And that's to do with the arms, obviously. Um, in a way, well, can I, can I organize things in a way that doesn't cause me problem in the shoulder? So there, for example, you know, this is a way most people do dog pose. So they push the ground away. They straighten the arms so they can lean their weight and then they push the ground away and the shoulders end up being the source of support in that your shoulders are holding you together rather than the ground underneath your hands being the source of support. So, a way to investigate, uh, I can't really give you an instruction to do it in how to do it differently, but I can give you a shift of intention. So, if you're interested in how shoulders work in terms of support, what you can do is try and relax your weight, because uh, inevitably all issues with any joint is can be sourced back to the spine having to do something it doesn't want to do. So if you can... <laughs> Relax your weight, relax your spine, which includes the weight of the head. And only you can know when that's happening. If you're trying to work out whether it's happening or not, you're probably lifting your head. So giving the weight down, but you want to give it to your hands. So it's your hands that need to press down, not push away from you your hands that need to press down so that you can give your weight and then you'll probably find yourself holding yourself with your pelvis and other things so you need to let that go too you want to be able to rest your weight down but into your hands which will take a lot of work from the arms the arms themselves will have to press down through the hands but if you do that with your shoulders you're not getting support you're actually holding yourself away from the ground with your spine so the ha the arms press down it's kind of more the forearms and you try and relax your weight through your shoulders which means that the shoulders kind of stay behind you 
and the shape you'll make is probably extended so in order to be happy around the hips and spine instead of hanging your weight through your belly you need that downward action through your hands and possibly your knees and feet to support you on the inside so from the down as you breathe and release there needs to be a responsive reaction from the breath from the release of the breath that causes the chest and belly to empty back because you're giving your weight to your hands knees and feet now it might look like I'm just relaxing but it's surprisingly hard work and the work is because you're not holding yourself up you're supporting yourself so the hands are down the shoulders are behind you so that you can rest through them and there's a down through the knees and down through the feet so that you're not having to hold your back and your pelvis if you can get that feeling of resting your weight suspending your weight through your shoulders and the arms are strong enough to do that there's a down and kind of pulling feeling that allows you to do that then when you decide to move it's because you it's the spine that drops its weight into the hands and then you're leaning through the hands is the thing that allows the spine the spine to rest into that support the continued down through your contact through the hands and through the feet should continue to help support the chest and belly away from the ground not to lift it but away from the ground and into the front surface of the spine so you end up unfolding because you're coming together front to back um, whew, I say, but it, it's hard work it's hard work but it's not the work of pushing your weight around that, that's not difficult that's easy but it's the kind of um, it's kind of a cheap way of doing it that leaves you um, having to hold yourself together between the shoulder and the spine um, I'll show you what I mean if, if, you, if you're doing the normal thing of holding yourself away from the ground and moving it's kind of not much effort at all but what you're left with is a holding pattern because you've got no way of finding support for the spine the thing I'm offering is for you which is you and your spine to be able to find support through your body the down of the hands the back of the shoulders allows you to rest through the, the effortful support use of the arms so that your spine is relaxed and moreover it relaxes between the shoulder blades and if there's one shoulder out of whack it will be one part of that spine that is stuck but if it can rest through it will no longer be stuck in fact it can give its weight to the hands directly with the shoulders behind you and then the the use of the arms to send you over your feet which is out through your fingers will also have the effect of supporting the chest and the belly away from the ground so the spine itself will be carrying no weight instead it can relate to touch by resting down and the response of your touch causes the core and the chest to feel supported up and it's all to do with the breath if you can arrive in that way instead of having to try and stretch the spine which is what people do you're already in a supported open relationship from the spine so your job is to relax through your bones and the breath itself will be the thing that allows you to elongate from the spine itself okay so um yeah uh yeah <laughs> there you go um you have to there's something to do with the 
shoulder are currently pushing the ground away. If instead you find support for that shoulder back behind you, then those shoulders will come together a little bit behind you, which will allow the spine to rest through to the hands. And then the active response of supporting yourself will cause support at the front of the spine. The result should be a shoulder that's in the right place. Okay. Um, I hope that was useful, Shelley. Uh, if there's, uh, if you can't find your way with it, and um, uh, book a free 15 minute thing with me and I'll see if I can tell what's going on. If it's a bit more, if it's more complicated and requires a bit more attention or if you, if you just want some direct guidance moment by moment to get you there, um, then you can uh, probably a half hour one to one would, would sort it out for you. Okay, my dear, um, it'd be nice to see you again anyway, Shelley. Um, hope you're well. And I hope that was useful to anyone else. Please feel free to share it around Facebook. Should you, um, well, uh, if, if, if you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed it, click the like button for me. Let me know that you did. And um, yeah, share it around Facebook for me whilst it stays up on, on, on this group. And uh, yeah, I shall see you soon. I'm, I, I do my Saturday morning workshops every Saturday. You can join me for one of those. Um, uh, it's online, but um, cheapest chips. If you're on the screen, I can work with you as if you're in the room with me. It makes no difference to me. I can tell what's going on. Uh, and if you want to um, simply be, enjoy the content um, live with me, I, I still take questions via chat. You can, you can um, uh, book a view only place and um, it, it's still interactive, but like I say, via chat. Right, uh, that's all from me. I shall see you the same time, same place next week. Much love to you now. Bye. There we go. Where is it? Where's it gone? There it is. Good. <laughs> Technology, eh? <laughs>